Hello, welcome, welcome to Ricardo's Crossing. Okay, before I start the video, I just want to do a little bit of a disclaimer first. Now, I don't normally do these type of readings, I don't normally get involved in that, but I have been watching the Midas Touch. Okay, I must admit, I have been watching the Midas Touch, so I have been keeping up to date with what's been going on politically and um, with all the criminal, um, all the court cases, should I say, the um, judges and things like that that's been going on, I have been watching the Midas Touch. So I think this reading has a lot to do with this global energy that's been going on, very collective. I don't feel, it's not a personal reading on any aspect at all. I think this is very global energy because that's what I've been watching. So anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. But please stick around and listen to the reading. I think there's some real stuff to really sort of think about with what's going on in the world right now. Okay, let's get on to it. Talk to you later. Hello, welcome to Ikate's Crossing. Oh, card flew out. And I hadn't even really sort of thought too much about it as yet. Just what do I need to know? And we're going to start with the Ace or the One of Vessels. Okay, so there's definitely a new beginning in regards to the, it's the spirit, the essence of our emotions, our feelings at this time. Feels like we're very much connecting to our emotions for this card here. Interesting. I am going to dive a little bit further with this book here but I do want to have a look and see what's it going to tell us about our emotions at this time it feels like we're very much dealing with our emotions whoa <laughs> you would have seen the, that card flew. interesting interesting with the maiden of blades feels like our thoughts there's a dark cloud above our thoughts at this time feels like there's a lot of um energy going around that's very um, darkish in regards to our thoughts. There's a real cloud hanging over our thoughts or our perceptions at this time. There seems to be some issue or something going on that is um, really hindering our thoughts is what I want to say here. Whoops, just dropped the card hindering our thoughts and so that could be affecting our emotions at this time interesting let's see what else do we need to know about our emotions and our thoughts and this dark cloud that's hanging over us let's have a look so what do we okay let me see what's going on here Okay, there's two cards here and two cards here. Okay, so I think it feels like we're reading in two cards at a time here. Pulled out, you would have seen. Okay, first thing we've got is about justice and our medicine wheel. So it feels very much like our legal. It's, it's very much a legal situation that's going on. It does feel like there's a lot of decisions to be made in regards to legalities in regards to, I want to say, an official energy that's going on. It feels very official energy that's going on, and it does feel like there's a lot of decisions to be made. It does feel like there's a lot of stuff going around and around in circle, and there is some very clear um, consequences to actions being made at the moment above this dark cloud. Interesting. Whoa, okay, so we have the devil. And I actually get a literally an evil person coming in with this one. I got very, very strongly here. So someone who's very evil, who's um, who's a real devil incarnate, is what I want to say here. Um, 
there's a lot of um, restrictions. It feels like he's chaining, chaining the, chaining everything to the situation, chaining the world to a situation, and it's going to take a lot of strength, a lot of courage, a lot of endurance and stamina to get through the situation that might be to do with what i'm watching on youtube at the moment and i know this is i don't normally do um sort of get involved in um politics and global issues and things like that but i have been watching what's going on and i think this is what um is quite clear and i'm not going to mention any names because you guys know who this devil incarnate actually is and it is going to take you and that's why i think with emotions and things running quite wild quite high there is a dark cloud hanging over and it does mean that legally you know politically legally um or authoritarian type of energy there is a lot of decisions, a lot of choices to be made, and it's not just on you personally. I think this is a very global issue involved. I think it affects a lot of people globally, um, you know, with our leaders and things like that, with what's going to happen with the situation. So I do think it affects a lot of people. And so here we get this, in, um, well, as I keep get getting this devil incarnate, in the sense of he of this person being quite evil narcissistic there is this sort of chain or restrictions that he want to place on the world and so it is going to take a lot of strength this is a very very interesting and i did not expect this to come up in a reading but i have been watching the news i have been watching um midas touch and um the news and things like that and trying to keep up to date with what's going on because even though it's happening in one country it is going to affect the world globally so it is going to take a lot of strength a lot of endurance to actually get through this process to the other side interesting and i think that's why it's affecting so many emotionally and it does bring in this dark cloud over the world okay oh what just flipped out then there we go the cards that flipped out two more cards flipped out here we tell us that there is hope there is hope with the star it does tell us that there's hope coming in there is a wish a hope is what I get there very clearly is the words hope and I'm um, being able to rebuild the thread of life the thread of the world the thread of the country thread of what's going on because it's all about that sense of bringing everything together harvesting everything sort of bringing in a wealth of abundance and prosperity so there is hope to bringing in the abundance and the prosperity being able to rebuild that thread that may have broken at this time that may feel broken at this time wow i did not expect that reading to come through that was quite powerful but i think it has been because i have been watching the news i have been watching midas touch i have been sort of trying to keep up with all the legalities of it all which i think why we get this um sense of um justice card coming up because I have been watching the legalities of it all, I do feel as though um, there is this, um, there are people who are really trying to sort of make the clear decisions, firm decisions to stop the world going round and round in circles, to be able to sort of keep things moving forward, to bring the good luck that it needs in this journey as well. Um, I think that has produced a really sort of dark cloud over the world globally, not just in one country, but in the world. And I don't normally get involved with this, but because I think I've been watching the news, I have been watching it, trying to sort of keep up to date with what's going on. It's sort of affecting the, this reading here, which is quite interesting indeed. So let's sort of bring in... The Spirit of the Wheel Oracle. 
what I want to do here is just bring in a little bit more of the spirit of the oracle. Let's have a look. What message? Oh! This one here, I know a few popped out. Oh, it was interesting. It was only four popped out. I thought there was a whole lot more. Okay, four cards popped out. What have we got? Interesting about leadership with Big Winds Moon talks about leadership, which is what we're talking about. We're talking about expectations, processes, and goals with the budding trees, moons. So to me, we've got this sense. Interesting. So we have the sense of this leadership. There's someone that's in control in the thing. And what's our expectations of the process and the goals to what we expect? In regards to our leader. Okay? In regards to our leader. So, interesting cards there. Here we've got the sense of trying to balance the energy with some honesty. Can we, we expect honesty from our leaders in the world, don't we? We expect, um, yeah, I do feel like there's a sense of um, balancing out the energy. Um, and yes, it is affecting, you know, a balancing out of our emotions as well. But I do feel like it's all about the honesty that we expect from our leaders as well. And here we have life with right berries moon. We've got life lessons, victory and courage. So um, we're hoping that with the with what we expect from our leaders and everything, that the outcome is going to be one of victory. Wow. Interesting. Of course, it's going to take us a lot of courage. There's a lot of lessons that we're learning through this process as well. Um, legal lessons and things like that. There's a lot of stuff um, globally, I think, we're learning about um, in ourselves and what we expect and what, what's expected of us as individuals. I think this is a very sort of global energy type of reading interesting indeed interesting okay so we're going to go back and have a look at the ace or the one of vessels right so let's go back and have a look at the one of vessels because that was the first card we sort of looked at okay so let's take a minute and take a breath for a second let's just take a breath and have a look at one of vessels women sit in the moon lodge a lodge made of willows and shaped like a turtle's back a lodge which an opening to the south so the south wind woman can join and whisper sweet dreams to both the maidens and mothers that sit sharing their moon time the floor of the lodge is the good earth covered with soft mosses this is a time of relaxation but it's also a time when the grandmothers and women elders can teach their younger sisters the mysteries of the sisterhoods without prying eyes and ears of men around. This is a sacred time, a time to learn or teach about the source of power and how vessels are like wombs, whether baskets, lodges, pottery or gourds. How the womb is the cradle of life, the secret red pulsing container. How conception, gestation and birth are all part of the magic of woman. A belly filled with child, a vessel with an invisible umbilical cord that connects womankind and sisterhood back to first woman. My friend Misty Lee equates this to a woman's center. So too is the Moon Lodge a woman's center, a place of sharing, learning and enlightenment. Now this is very interesting when you just take that for a minute and think about the things that have been going on globally or things that have been going on throughout the US in regards to sisterhood, in regards to women's bodies. Very interesting card to come up right now. Okay, Agnes Wilson, Whistling Elk tells her students, the basket is the ancient way of women. If by baskets we refer to container, and if by container we include pottery, then we are close to a universal concept in the world of the Maya. It has been said that pottery was was woman. In ancient Africa, Melanesia, South and Central, Central and South America, 
pottery was made by women with designs inspired by women in the Amazon basin in early Peru among the ancient Greeks and in early Egypt prior to the invention of the potter's wheel the magnificent patterns painted and incised on clay were born of the wind and spirit and ceremony of woman pottery is but one of the universal manifestations of woman's magic so globally we need to connect as women or the feminine aspects if you like in Native America, among the sedentary agricultural nations, the women developed the making of poetry, of pottery into a fine art. Some of the most beautiful poetry, what, sorry, beautiful pottery was and still is made by women of the Algonquin, Iroquois, and Pueblo nations. The methods and the type of poetry were influenced by the environments. Environment. Woodland women used clay that was powdered and mixed with shell or sand and water. They shaped the clay into rope and co coiled the ropes around gourds. The gourds burned away as the pottery was fired. After cooling, the pot was sanded and painted. Among the Pueblo nations, the potter's art was almost a religion. Women remained silent and respectful during the process. From the gathering of the clay until the last design was painted, they believed if they respected the spirit of the clay, their source would never fail. Southwestern women learnt early to make eggshell thin jars that could hold several gallons of water, the highest possible vessels in which to carry water from distant the lightest sorry, the lightest possible vessels in which to carry water from distant wells. Decorations were not only painted, incised or moulded, wood, bone and stone fetishes were, which represented sacred animals and plants were also hung from the pots. It was believed that the powers of meditation, um, sorry, mediation with the great mystery possessed by plants and activities and animals resided also in their images. The Zuni decorated their fetishes with symbols and animal sinew, fur and feathers. And before hunting, a Zuni communed through fetishes with personal guides. The day of the council of the fetishes is an elaborate festival held every year in the Kivas. The jar on the one of vessels is a southwestern fetish jar that would be used by a medicine woman to dream the future. A hole in the side allows a fetish to fall out when the jar is shaken. The fetish might be of feathers, claws, bones or shells. The essence of the one of vessels is the fulfillment, the beginning or the renewal of love and thus of life. If it's reversed, its emotions of life and love are smothered or repressed. The catchphrase is love. Physically, love of one's work. Mentally, love of someone else. Emotionally, love of self. And spiritually, love of God and the works of the great mystery. What an interesting reading. Okay, so that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care and blessed be. Stick around after this ending, video ending. There's a little side note. Take care. Blessed be. note after all this videoing and everything like that is that the Native American tarot that I used in this reading was a deck that I have used for over 20 years it was my first tarot deck that I ever connected to I used it for every reading basically I would use it at um, psychic fairs 
um, in shops and people's houses and my own place for, for readings. I read with this deck constantly. It was sort of a deck that I constantly used. I definitely connected with it on many levels. So I do feel a very kinship to this deck. And so I just sort of wanted to make a bit of a side note to that, that it is a deck that I've been using for over 23 years. Wow! <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? So, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And sorry, you're going to hear the um, lawnmower guy in the background here as he mows our lawns in our site, our campground. Anyway, so yes, I have been using this deck as a set for over 23 years. Yes, I have replaced it um, to the new cardstock with US Games. I did like the original. It was a bit more um, cardy, but um, it's a brilliant deck. Absolutely love this the imagery. I find speaks volumes to me. I do get a lot out of it when I'm doing readings for people. I absolutely love this deck. Now, this one here, Spirit of the Wheel, um, meditation cards. I have read with this deck before, and I repurchased it. Um, again, decks that disappeared due to circumstances, and so I was really good to really pleased to get this back into my collection. It was one of those decks that I used um, originally. Anyway, that's it from me. Take care and blessed.